Last week I had a talk for a super base meetup and I built a real time memory game and I want to show you something that's going to blow your mind and that, that is real time client loaders. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So before I actually show you the code, I just want to run through the package JSON. So I used our own stack for this called base stack and I just use it to move faster. But what you need to know is that I use stuff like Prisma and React Query and Superbase and React Router version 7 framework mode. So with that out of the way, let's jump into the code. So the first piece of the puzzle that I want to show you is in the app and in the root TSX file. In the root TSX, what I do is I create a query client. And what I do with this query client is I export it and I then have a loader that returns the language, the client environment, the player and the redirect to. So quickly to go through this, I just create a player in the cookie session. I retrieve it and set it into there. I also have the redirect to logic. So if you log into a room itself, it redirects you to the home page. you log in and it controls you back. This is kind of the standard login experience that you do in Re React Router version 7 apps, frameworks. But I'm not going to go too deep into it. What you need to know is, for example, here, I just set, I get the server session, I set the ID of the player, and then I just throw a redirect to whatever, either to redirect to or the home page. I set the cookie and commit the server session, and that logs the user in. So. That's like the gist of it. I'm not going to go into that part too deeply because we don't care about that part for this. And another thing that's really important is here in the layout. So this both wraps the error boundary and the application itself. I create a query client provider with the query client I created above. So this one that that's exported and then I have this name form, which we're going to skip. So it's just a simple form to enter your name. And then I have the app export here. So this is the default export. This gets rendered by the root TSX. And then I, depending on if the player is there, I render the application or the signup form. And that's what I do in the root. So the most important two pieces here are the query client provider wrapping the whole application. And then the query client that I export from here. Now, the second part of the puzzle and the most exciting one. If I open up routes and I go to rooms.roomid and if I scroll up here to the top, you can see that I have a huge select query. So if I open it up, you can see that I fetch from the room table. I also do a join with active players and then I do a join with players inside of active players and I select a bunch of properties that I need. And this is a little bit of an advanced Prisma query, but that's not the important bit here. The important bit here is that I get the room with the players and then I just return them from the loader. And that's what I do in the loader. So on the server and now the cool part about the client loader. So the client loader says client.hydrate set to true. So this fires as soon as the app is hydrated. Check this out. So the first thing we do is we try to get the query data that is room and the room param from the URL. So for example, room slash one, room slash two. Then if the cache data is there, use that as the data otherwise fetch it from the server and if we fetched it from the server so if the cache data is not there i'm gonna set the query data with the data fetched from the server so if i awaited this i get it inside of here if the cache data was not there i set the data there and this populates the query client with the query data for this query and now, because the whole application is wrapped with the query client provider, whenever this set query data is called, the query client provider is going to re-render the application or the relevant bits and keep that in mind for the rest of this. 
So I have these two subscriptions. So this subscribes to the real time events on Superbase. And what you need to know is you select a channel. If you don't know Superbase, you don't really care about this part. This can even be your own web socket on your own server. You subscribe to the channel and then you listen to database changes. So this is what this is. So Postgres changes. You say which event you want to listen to, what schema, what table. This can be a little bit more granular. I made it very generic for the demo, but this can be very granular. So for example, you can do uh, only insert events or whatever you need to listen to. And then I have the send the room update. And if I open this up, what it does is whenever the payload is fetched from Superbase, set it or rather first get it from the query data and then if the payload that was fetched matches the room id that we're in set the new data inside of the room so this is what it does and there's another helper function so if i go back to the actual code the other helper function is the handle player update and this is a really cool one because check this out. So this is the same as the one above. So it just listens to a different table. So active players instead of rooms. But as you can see, I pass in the server loader as a function program. And the reason why I do that is whenever it fetches from Superbase, first of all, I check if the player exists in the array because on the server we fetch with two joins so the player data itself is not present in payload.new because that comes from a different table and because that's the case whenever a new player joins we don't have the information on the name on the id and on another few properties so what we do inside of here is say whenever the data is tail so it's missing some parameters like name of the player and stuff like that fetch it from the server again and populate the query client otherwise we know because this didn't go through we know that the query client has the player so we just loop over it and fill the new data with the new info so the score and if the player is still in the room or he left and what this means is whenever the data is stale you fetch it from the server you fill it in and otherwise if it's not stale you just fill it in with the new data so you might be wondering at this point why do we all do this in the client loader what's the benefit and the benefit is you can create now this unsubscribe function and set it down the wire and the benefit now is you use the use query hook you give it the component props loader data so it knows what the data is inside of it and then you tell it the query key that it's gonna use and because this matches the client loader query key the data itself is gonna be the room the players and all of this other stuff and then we return if it's undefined because it can happen that it's loading we check if the loader data has the unsubscribe function that we call when the component is unmounted and all of the other stuff is refreshing in real time. So the data.room, the data.players, everything is refreshing in real time because in the client loader we are listening to these Postgres changes and whenever they fire the query client gets refilled with new data because the query client gets refilled this data changes automatically and then you just keep having the latest data here and it's being fed to your component magically behind the scenes and the component itself can be as stupid as it wants to be and for example in this component we have the leave game function the update room that actually sends the update to Superbase. This can also be implemented in a client action or something like that, depending on how you want to handle it. 
but the component itself is very very stupid and the only complicated piece is the handle card click and what this does is because it's a memory game you're clicking two matches whenever you click a card it sends the updates to the room and to the player and because this happens in real time all the players subscribed to this channel get real-time updates and this is pretty awesome and you can see this is all the code it took and if I actually run this project with pdev and if I switch to the browser I already logged in and for example if I just create a new room I'm in and whenever I click on the card it's updated in real time and sent to the database and then this is called in the client loader the client loader fetches the new data and then the data is shown automatically without you having to do anything and i know i suck at the game because i'm talking to you and playing at the same time but as you can see everything is propagated in real time and it all just works and i think this is a really really cool pattern and i'm really excited about it and i hope you like it too i call it live client loaders but that's just a coin i turned like in two minutes and i just wanted to share it with you guys and i would really love to hear your opinions on this what do you think about it is there any way i can improve this and would you use this in your projects and also what's cool about this like i said in the beginning if i go back to the vs code editor and then if i scroll up here and if i go to the actual client loader this doesn't have to come from superbase this can fr come from your web socket this can come from socket io this can come from anything as long as it's real time it's gonna work the query client is going to update the data and all you need in the component is the use query here. And the cool thing about this is that you don't have to actually do it in the same file. For example, let's say you had a game component that listened to this query key. You can do it in a completely separate place and it would still work because the query key matches the one in the client loader so you can have for example 10 different components that listen to the same query and whenever it's updated in real time inside of the client loader all of the 10 subscribe components are going to know about it and that is pretty mind-blowing to me it's so simple to set up and that's pretty much it i hope you enjoyed this one thank you for watching and see you in the next one bye